Hopkins and Bill Gold for his last year. And uh, then we looked at several things, and several things looked the best. But when we heard about the job here with the Board of Pensions, we decided to come to Lakeland. Oh, good. And we managed the Board of Pension Houses for two years, or um, 57 of them, I think, 54. And uh, 37 here, and 22 in Imperial South Day. Mm. And then after two years, the said it bought the pension houses, okay. the pension board went out of business. So, but we stayed on. We joined the homes. It's been a good choice for us. I've been here 25 years. Oh, my heavens. You've been in, in Lakeland 25 years? I've been in this house 25 years. Really? Longer than I've been any place. <laughs> That's awesome. I have to say, this is a pretty area. I've never been over here. I've never been in this section of Lakeland because I've, I've only lived in Lakeland uh, four years. Are your family here? Just my immediate family. Not not my no. I didn't. Um, I was raised in Washington State. Um, oh, really? Yeah. So. Uh, Are you married? Um, I have five kids. Oh, you have five. <laughs> really? Up in North Carolina. No, that was no. Lynn. That was in North Lynn, Carolina. Lynn. Yeah. Pardon? When we were talking about North Carolina, I was talking about Lynn is in North Carolina, Lynn Grady right now. Oh. That's what, we were just talking, and I think I misled you. Oh, okay. But she lives here. Oh, yeah, I yeah. live here. With her five kids and her husband. I missed that. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah. But it's, uh... Which church are you in? Uh, I just started going to First Presbyterian. First Presbyterian? Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Oh, yep. Yeah. Yep. C uh, Cooper and my little boy, my twin, um, they're uh, best friends. So Cooper has been the light of Brett's life forever mm -hmm. and uh, just so excited to, mm -hmm. to be That's part of it. One. So it's neat. And your last name is? Nutting. I'm sorry. Nutting. And you Okay. Yep. Alright, as long as the door goes by, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. We make sure, is it some of our... I'm glad they're not going to work. It says records. Okay, good. I can shut this one. Um, do you mind if we do that just for the next part? Or I'll do it. I don't think it's going to help. That's <laughs> okay. I didn't use it. You are on. <laughs> yes, Ruth. Oh, the league glory. <laughs> um, tell us, instead of, you've got a good background of your life. Um, your it's state, not an organized No, it's very, it's very organized. Better than I could do. Tell us about your faith story. Not my faith story. Your faith story. Like, how you've seen God weave, like, when you became a Christian, how that happened. I think that... <clears throat> I think that somehow the Lord puts within us, some of us, a desire to know him, more so than others, because my brothers and I grew up in the same, and they weren't the least bit interested. They ended up good churchmen, mm -hmm. and interested in the church and went, but never controlled their lives yeah. like I did mine right from the beginning. And I met a elderly gentleman when I was tiny crawl up in his lap and won his heart sort of thing, you know. And we remained friends until he died. And he, I went to church with him every Sunday and we sat in the back pews and he'd let me call her from the hymn books and be the candy. So,
another one, this is a all plant birth, all the go to Purdue because she was a widow and that would have been the logical way to get us educated and she was determined to get educated. And uh, I'd like to take her for a year and that was very meaningful year. And I'm going to Indiana, it's quite a university now, it's a small college that three to five hundred students at that time, not too many. And uh, but it was a very meaningful year for me and I think that's when I really made my job. Where's your husband's family from? Uh, his father was German, his mother's Swedish. Oh, okay. And his father had eighth grade education, his mother third grade. Wow. They came in as children and his mother's family was especially, had a really hard time. A lot of children and no education. The women mostly cleaned houses in Minneapolis. Where did they come when they, when they came over? Where did they settle? In the, Ellsworth, Wisconsin. Okay. And then uh, Red Wing, east of Red Wing, Minnesota. Oh, okay. And they had the family homestead there. Very fine people, very hardworking, and uh, managed magnificently for the hard time, you know, the stringent conditions. And, yeah. Yeah, we're. So I'm very supportive of Bob and his education. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. His doctorate was in chemistry? Yeah, he has his PhD in organic chemistry. Organic chemistry. He had two sisters, one by the or younger, but neither of them went to college. Really? They were good people, hard working. Yeah. Educated in their own way. Right. On the insurance office. Right. So they could not stop, but without opportunity. Right. Mm -hmm. So what, what was it like raising five kids. Now three of them were born in Pakistan? Three were born in Pakistan. Okay. So what was it like to raise your kids there? Well, <coughs> it was kind of laid out for us because there was no school in Rawalpindi mm -hmm. where we lived. There were uh, English speaking schools or Urdu schools. And we did try it when they were small, but it was really um, uh, not an ideal situation. They really needed to, to have American education, mm -hmm. or American or British system. And so they opened the school for missionary children. And our oldest son was 
the uh, oldest student in the school, and they added a class each year, so it was kind of like homeschooling. Mm -hmm. He was one of two graduates. Okay. Uh -huh. And they've all done well, and they've all turned out to be great kids. Mm -hmm. But the schooling was not ideal. The school did grow to like 150 students, and they all five went there. And uh, it was in the mountains, so they had to go on boarding. And I think any child that spends her school years in boarding carries scars from that. Mm -hmm. And uh, ours are no exception. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, our daughter, who had the hardest time and a big adjustment when she came back to the States, our older daughter, Anne, mm -hmm. now loves Pakistan. She's mm -hmm. the one that planned my trip and took right. me back. And, mm -hmm. right, and and so, uh, on the faith journey, I do think that uh, um, you have a special fellowship among a mission group. Mm -hmm. and we had opportunity to hear speakers, uh, Keswick people, many British, wonderful, wonderful speakers. And uh, we, the um, situation is so dire, so needy. You're sort of hitting yourself against a brick wall and it throws you on the Lord in a way that you don't experience it or are not as apt to experience it here. At least that's been my experience. And uh, we had, uh, so we had many opportunities for growth and uh, meeting great men of God and, and uh, Take experiences along the way, which I think really uh, have given me a really rich, wonderful foundation. Mm -hmm. That's your question. Yeah. Um, and last time I was meeting with you, we were talking about in this, you would go visit the kids when they were at boarding school, and, and you and Bob would, I was trying to remember some of those fun little excursions that you guys would take when you visited the kids at school. Well, we did. <coughs> we uh, did everything we could as a family. You try to make up for the time when you're separated, because they would go to the boarding school in March, and it would be cold and murray, snow on the ground. There were no, no, there was no heat, and they got one bath a week, and they had tin tubs, and they would carry the water down the hill in canisters and dump it in, and by the time the kids got in it, there would be this much water, and it would be practically cold. And then I spent one night in the hostel when I went back, and I wore all my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> I have a picture of me in the hostel where, because they built a hostel after our kids were there, and, mm. and uh, the girls lived in it. I don't think the boys, Bob Jr. certainly did not live in the hostel because they hadn't built it yet. But, uh, so they, it, it was pretty Spartan hostel. Mm -hmm. But uh, the fellowship was rich. And uh, the children had very different experiences. They've had opportunities for travel. And uh, it was easier for the boys and the girls because being a Muslim country and a boys college, mainly we had a hundred girls, but my girls couldn't have freedom. They couldn't go out to the bazaar or fly kites or even go to the library without their father. I mean, we had to be very protective wow. of the girls. Mm -hmm. And it was very hard on them. Mm -hmm. But the uh, boys just rode their bicycles and put glass on the kite string and the kite string and really, if you've read the, what is it, the kite flyer? Anyway, mm -hmm. our boys loved flight kite flying. Oh. And Jim still does, <laughs> oh. although they don't allow it anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, they have, and they played with all the Pakistani professors' children when they were mm -hmm. home. They'd go to school in March, and then we would go. I would go up and make a home for them, very Spartan home, no running water and so forth, mm -hmm. for three months in the summer. Okay. And then they would go back in boarding and come home at Christmas. And they'd be on the plains with us three months in the winter because that's the coldest time in the hills. Okay. 
So we had them three, 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 mm -hmm. and Bob would come up for his month holiday. And then when we did that, we would try to do something special for the 10 day school break at the beginning and end of the summer. We'd go up in the Cogon Valley and usually you rent a Jeep and do that. Mm -hmm. Kids loved camping, and so we did a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they, they would get to come home for one long weekend per term, mm -hmm. and uh, we tried to always have picnics, and there was an opportunity to swim. Well, we did find one swimming pool on the, the way up and down from Murray, which was kind of dangerous, really, but it was a place where we did go sometimes. And uh, they played soccer and, and uh, a little bit of cricket. Now, when the kids were at boarding and Bob was teaching, what were some of the things you were doing? What did I do? Yeah. At Gordon College, I worked um, pretty much, we had a hundred girls, mm -hmm. and I taught a Bible class in the beginning for girls, and I worked a lot with the Christian girls and the Christian students. We opened our home one night a week, and they came in and played games, and I give them an orange or something at the end. Mm -hmm cup of tea mm -hmm. and uh, they loved that coming in and the usual activities of the college we had uh, uh, my husband always taught Bible also to the Christian students Muslims were welcome but they had required Bible teaching our first few years but that soon changed and uh, you could not require Muslim students or non-Christian students to take model. But um, and then I had a Sunday school program where we had the Christian boys go out into the poor areas of the city, which were too far for children to get into a church fellowship to be taught. And they had child evangelism materials that I collected, both in English and in Urdu, so they could practice their language and practice their English in preparing and uh, they would take a flannel board and the flannel figures and the book with the lesson out into the um, poor areas. We had about 16 or 18 of those going. Wow. Ring a bell and call the children. And sometimes they had a rug, not a rug, it's just a cotton. We could mm -hmm. cotton something, put something on the ground or just the ground. And they would uh, set up their flannel graph and teach, take a little walk. And yeah. And uh, anyway, um, I, I had that program going. I did some um, retreats with Christian girls. We started a nurses Christian fellowship and we got Christian nurses from many different hospitals in the city. And um, in the war, when we went to Foreman College, I got much better. I was a different whistle. Women because a lot of them lived on campus. And uh, so we had a wives club, which was a lot of fun. And at Eid, they would share their faith. And at Christmas, we would share ours. Trust. So it was a good fellowship back and forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, college now, um, after 30 years, the college was given back to the church. And Peter Armacost who was the president of Ecker College for 23 years, went out, um, took a little early retirement, I think, and spent 10 years, and he just left last year in June, actually, and our gym took over. So this is Jim's first year mm -hmm. without Peter. He wow. was there one year with Peter, and uh -huh. then one year fundraising before that. Wow. So now he's on his own. He's actually... Uh, on his way to England this Sunday, where he will meet someone from the House of Lords, from the House of Representatives, who were Pakistani background, but they're now British, citizenship, mm -hmm. and they're in once in the House of Representatives, once in the House of Lords. He'll meet them for fundraising mm -hmm. opportunities, and uh, so he's a busy boy. Yeah. <laughs>
Your your children did they come back when you retired or did they? No, did your your children? 